Hey guys, what's up? Scottish Duck here once again. Okay, we're up to the normal DS now uh, on this little collection thing that I'm doing. We're up to the Nintendo handhelds. Let's get right into it. Right. First up, we have this Super Princess Peach. Um, did yes, I have played this before. I think it's from the folk that made. Um, do I have it at hand? No, I don't. The Legendary Starfy. Which is a game I don't think I've played either. Uh, that's actually, you know, more so than any other console, if I'm honest. You know, you're going to see a lot of like, uh, oh yeah, I've not really played this. Because I really love the DS. I should have given this introduction before I picked up a game. I really love the DS, but there are so many like whole series that I have not touched yet. Which I will always feel bad about until I eventually get to them. But... To counter that, some of the series on here are some of my all-time favourites, which we will talk about, and uh, yeah, so Super Princess Peach! Next up, um, clearly I put the, um, the non-important ones at the top, here's the Ghostbusters game. Okay, and uh, what the fuck's inside this? Oh, the cartridge is loose, alright, fair enough. Um, uh, what's this? Um, Mechanic Master? Is it Mechanic Master? Yes, it's Mechanic Master. It's still in its cellophane. I have no idea what this is. Okay. Uh, right, uh, here we go. I actually organized these uh, by series as well, by the way. Uh, here we have the uh, Sonic Rush Trilogy. We got Sonic Rush 1. Really good game. Uh, I really like Blaze, you know, as a character. One of the better Sonic characters that came out during that era of Sonic. You know, uh, kind of popular, I... That popularized the boost to win mechanic that some fans are so incredibly divisive on. To me, the game is really fun, so I'm not gonna whack it. And uh, we got Sonic Rush Adventure, the sequel, slightly worse, maybe. Um, I didn't really dig the sort of material collecting stuff. I really like the uh, jet ski missions and the other sort of like missions going towards um, uh, the levels. You know, I thought that was pretty cool, so yeah. And uh, to top it off, you have the DS version of Sonic Colors. It's Sonic Rush 3, without a fucking doubt. And uh, it does that job really well. It's just Sonic Rush, but you got fucking Wisps, and you can't play as Blaze, but Blaze is in this. In fact, they've got like a bunch of Sonic characters in this, just to show up for random levels and whatnot, which is something they didn't do on the Wii one. Also, this one has a Super Sonic boss fight that the Wii one doesn't. That always was so weird to me, and such a disappointment. I, I don't know why we couldn't have had a Super Sonic boss fight. But we got Super Sonic playable on regular levels for the first game of Sonic Colors. Okay, Sonic Fanboy um, mode. Stop it. Right, okay. Uh, next series we have is uh, Zelda. Zelda Phantom Hourglass, Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. I really don't like this game. I remember picking it up. In fact, this is actually probably a relevant time to talk about it. For many years, guys, handheld gaming for me was almost like a hindrance. When something was put on a handheld, I always thought, ugh, really? You're gonna put it on handheld? Like, I had this sort of, like, really cynical attitude towards it. So, for the most part, whenever I was, like, handheld gaming, it was to play franchises that I wanted to play, but had to buy the console that it was on, and of course, being a big Zelda fan for the years, I wanted to pick this up, and this was just such a perfect example of why I didn't like handheld gaming. I wasn't like, it's not that I hated the touch controls, it's just that so many of the things that this game introduces were shit. The dungeons weren't as good, the story was eh, yeah. yeah. But, and any time I get the chance to talk about this, I talk about it to death. Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks is a top 3 Zelda game for me. I absolutely love this one. Everything I disliked about Phantom Hourglass was fixed in here, okay? And, yeah absolutely love it. In fact, I would almost go on to say that I loved this game so much that it actually gave me the sort of, like, incentive to try out other DS games. You know? Like, I was just sort of thinking to myself, you know what, playing on the DS is pretty fun. I should try some other games. Uh, I really do owe it to this game. It's that good, so play it if you fucking have it. It's, it's really good. Uh, right, so I'm just picking these around. Alright, let's, let's do this here. Another series for you. Professor Layton, we got uh, Professor Layton in the Curious Village, that's the first one, um, where is it, Professor Layton, Pandora's Box, I think these are all called different things in a 
in America. Uh, here's an American copy of Unwound Future. I don't even know what it is called over here. Um, in fact, do I? No, I don't. I used to have this like, they had like a full advertisement on the cover of a newspaper uh, when this first came out and I remember I actually grabbed one and like, I have it somewhere, I don't know where it is, I would have thought that I put it in here, clearly I didn't, but I got this American version because it apparently contains like this whole small RPG game, uh, I don't even remember what it's called, but I just remember hearing that and thinking, okay, I'm going to get the American version, so I have it, um, didn't even play it. <laughs> I have played every Professor Layton game though, but um, I played I played this, uh, most of them through other means, you know. R4 guard. Uh, and uh, here's uh, Spectre's Call. This is actually my favorite Professor Layton game, right? I just thought that the origin story of Layton and Luke Meaton was really good, and it's the least stupid. It's still stupid, the story that is. All the Layton games are fucking stupid. But this was the least stupid, I thought. So yeah, this one's my favorite, I think. Um, we have uh, Devil Survivor 2, Shin Megami Tensei. I have the first one on the 3DS, but... but yeah, they did release this on the 3DS as well, didn't they? I don't know, it's basically a freaking um, real-time strategy game, but with Shin Megami Tensei, you know? Or at least that's what the first one was. I don't know if it's the same with this one, I'm assuming it is, but yeah. Devil Summoner, Devil Survivor, Devil Summoner's on the fucking PS2, fuck's sake, no. Uh, here's Thor. I actually only own this because Way Forward made it, and I bought it in a time where I was just like so pro Way, way Forward. I'm still quite pro Way Forward, you know, anytime they're making something I'll tend to, you know, pick, give a shit about it and like follow it or whatever. But I uh, don't think I ever popped it in, so yeah, there's, uh, there's Thor. Um... Rhythm Paradise, uh, Rhythm Heaven, it's pretty fun, it's pretty fun, the Rhythm Heaven games are quite good. Um, Metroid Prime Hunters, I remember enjoying this one, I only played it through once, the controls didn't bother me, and yeah, it was, it was far from like the worst thing ever. I think this game does have like quite a polarizing, uh, you know, the fan base is quite split on it, basically, um, but... I remember liking it, so yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, right, oh fuck. Um, do I save this for last? I, no, let's not save it for last, okay? My favorite series on the DS, Ace Attorney. Okay, I got all of them. I got, uh, let's, let's see if I can do this in order here. Ace Attorney, feature Ace Attorney, this one's my favorite. Justice for All. Um, Trials and Tribulations, that's the original trilogy, the ones that you really should play, they're re-releasing them on Switch, PS4, PC, it's going to be amazing. Um, Apollo Justice, definitely the weakest one. Um, East Turning Investigations, pretty good, definitely a step up from Apollo Justice. And here's a Japanese copy of Investigations 2. I did play the fan translation of this game, and this is one of the greatest Ace Attorney games there is, okay? Or at least that fan translation definitely made it worth it, okay? Like, I strongly recommend you check this out. If you like the first one, you will absolutely adore this. Is that... It really is that good. But yeah, Ace Attorney. It's one of those games that was like, okay, this is one of the best fucking things I've ever played. And to this day, I'm still, like, so pro Ace Attorney, waiting for the next game. I'm gonna buy that trilogy when it comes out on, like, Switch, PS4. I'm gonna probably buy it multiple times, because I'm that sort of mental fan. But yeah, okay. Um, and uh, speaking of Ace Attorney, here we have Ghost Trick. Phantom Detective. Yeah, Phantom Detective. This was um, by Shu Takumi, the creator of Ace Attorney. He went on to make this. And uh, there's some... Actually, it's not, it's not really that different. It's not really that similar, I should say. It's very story-driven. That's pretty much it. Amazing story. Amazing mechanic where you play as a ghost, basically, and possess things, and you have to work out puzzles and stuff. Another game where it's just like, fuck's sake, play this. It's, it's so good. Yeah. Ghost Trick. Love it. Um, apparently, I've put all my sort of visual novel-style games together. Uh, here we have 999, American copy, because we didn't get it over here. Um, yeah. The 
fuck, what's it called? What's the trilogy called? You got 999, you got Virtue's Last Reward. Zero Escape Trilogy, that's it, okay. Virtue's Last Reward, I did play that. It's one of those games that I loved it at the time, but the more I, like, think back on it, I'm just like, that game was fucking bonkers, you know? <laughs> and, uh, to the point that I've not even played the third one yet, which has been out for a while, it's on Steam, you know? But this one, I actually really do like this. I can appreciate this on its own, you know? You don't necessarily need to connect it to later games in the series, so for that reason, I would highly recommend uh, playing this, and if you feel compelled to continue... Which, now that I think about it, when you get to the end of a game like this, how are you not compelled to continue, so... Yeah, but yeah, 999. I, I really like it. Okay, um, here is... Uh, some Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy 3, I never played this, I don't think. Uh, and uh, here is Final Fantasy, the Four Heroes of Light. What's interesting about this is that this was the game that the Bravely Default team made before Bravely Default. And apparently for... I mean, you look at the friggin' manual on the cover, it's the exact... it's pretty much the exact same art style as Bravely Default, plus you have four playable characters, so... I think I would really like this, and I need to sit down and play it eventually. But yeah, four heroes of light. Okay. Um, and uh, another series here... We got Rune Factory. Rune Factory 2 and 3 are still in cellophane, never been opened. Uh, because, uh, yeah, it was a series that I obviously had to own all of them for. And here is Rune Factory 1, which I think was the only one that was released over here. I don't... I have to double check that, but yeah. I never got too into this one, and I feel like... I don't know. It's supposed to be like, it's even subtitled, uh, Fantasy Harvest Moon where it's got sort of RPG elements on top of, like, your typical farming and socialising and stuff. But, it feels like the first of the series, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, I really think I would enjoy Rune Factory, like, um, 2, 3 onwards. I even have, like, Rune Factory 4 in the 3DS, just never got around to properly playing it, which I've always felt bad for, but, whatever, whatever. Um, next is, um... I have the Advance Wars games. Never popped these in either. I was talking about this in my Game Boy Advance uh, video where I have not properly gotten around to them yet. See, this is what I'm talking about. There's so many like franchises that were like golden on the DS that I've just not touched yet. Uh, speaking of fucking which, here's the Etrian Odyssey games, you know? The only Etrian Odyssey game that I've played to a decent degree was Etrian Odyssey 4. And I do not like those games where you're making your own party, basically. Like Pokemon. Pokemon's a perfect example, you know? You don't have, like, a set party that you can focus on. Uh, even, like, in the Shin Megami Tensei games, where you are capturing demons, Pokemon, basically, you still have, like, a main character that you can focus on and level up separate from all your, like, demons. Well, that's not really the case with Etrian Odyssey. All your party members... At least in the ones that I've played. Maybe one of them does have, like, a central party member. I don't know. But, yeah. I don't really dig that that much. So, for that reason, Etrian Odyssey's never been, like, a big priority series of mine. But I own every single game. Wait till we get to the 3DS collection. I'll probably continue this run. Uh, with that said, I might as well go into this uh, series next. We got Dragon Quest. Uh, I got Dragon Quest... Um, Four, five, and six. On the, these were remakes of the Super Nintendo games. Uh, Dragon Quest uh, four, fucking fantastic. Uh, Dragon Quest five, still fucking fantastic. And I played all these back to back. I played Dragon Quest eight, went right onto four, went right onto five. At that point, I was probably quite burnt out. Then I got Dragon Quest six, and this is one of my all-time biggest curse games, guys. Three times I've tried to play this game. Each of those three times I got a little bit farther, and I always give it up, I'm always bored of it, I'm always like, there's something about this one Dragon Quest game that is not grabbing me. I don't know what it is, and I've kind of just now fully accepted, okay, Dragon Quest VI, that's never going to get beaten, at least on the DS. Maybe if they remake it again, I'll, my interest will peak again, but as of, as of right now, I'm just like, I can't do it, something just keeps stopping me. And uh, coming off of, like, Etrian Odyssey, I also have Dragon Quest IX here. Now, this was just, like, 
you know, you make your own party, basically. Although you do have, now that I think about it, you do have, like, one character to sort of like keep leveling up yourself so it's not quite like Etrian I'll say but even then I remember this was my first Dragon Quest game and it definitely wasn't the best introduction in my opinion uh, because I did not dig the create your own party stuff that they included in this and it's sort of like more focus on multiplayer I guess that was also a thing but uh, yeah I, I don't want to I actually want to try it again with my newfound love for Dragon Quest I feel like I should go back to this and give it a proper chance so Maybe one day, maybe one day. Um, here's uh, Lunar Night by Kojima Studios, funnily enough. And I remember this was like one of the first games I actually picked up for the DS. It was a pure impulse buy and I never properly sat down to play it, I don't think. I think I got like a wee bit in, but not like, not properly. And I believe this is like the successor or it's set in the same universe as the Boktai games. The Boktai games were like these games for the Game Boy Advance that Kojima also had a hand in. I think. Maybe talking about Mars, that's just... I don't know, but yeah. Lunar Nights. Lunar Nights. I'm sure someone will correct me. Another game I've not played. Infinite Space by Platinum Games. That's actually the only reason I really own this one. And uh, yeah, I feel like... Again, I feel like it's one of those ones that I would like really enjoy. So yeah, Infinite Space. Uh, another one that I've never played, <laughs> Legendary Starfleet, I was talking about this earlier. It's still the cellophane, for fuck's sake. And I feel like I would- there's another one. I feel like I would love. Look how cute this fucking cover is. Yeah. Yeah. Sonic Chronicles, here's one that I did play. For all the wrong reasons. Didn't beat it. Didn't really- wasn't really digging it that much. But yeah, Sonic Chronicles. The Dark Brotherhood didn't really go anywhere for a reason, I'd say. Aliens Infestation, this was another way forward game, which I did play, by the way, and uh, it's a pretty, it's actually a really good Metroidvania style game set in the Aliens universe, you know? I definitely recommend it, in fact, I'm surprised Way Forward hasn't tried to re-release that. Well, I suppose it is an Aliens game and isn't really, you know, the, the, fran the franchise is sort of like changing hands at the moment, it seems, I don't know, I don't know. The World Ends With You. This one I have played and it's fucking fantastic. I have not like touched the Switch version. Apparently the Switch version had like, I don't know, I kept hearing mixed things about the controls so I decided to like stay away from it. But that doesn't matter because we have this DS version and this DS version is excellent. So there's that. Radiant Astoria. In fact, yeah, I'll talk about this together. Radiant Astoria and uh, I also have uh, Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey. Both of these games got 3DS remakes last year, you know? Reading Astoria, this was like another cursed game for me, and uh, I always kept starting it and like loved it, but just dropped it for whatever reason. I finally did beat it on the 3DS last year. Excellent game, very, very good. And uh, you know, funnily enough, so this is Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey. I've been play. I started playing the I started playing the 3DS version of this last year when it came out. Got about six hours in and stopped. As I do, it's like, okay, is this going to be a cursed game? I'm playing it right now and I'm about like 11, 12 hours in or something. And I'm actually thinking about stopping. You know what? This is a rare opportunity. Let me actually try and articulate out loud why I'm not really digging this. This, this will be self-help for me, okay? Okay, so... Shin Megami Tensei... It has that sort of like make your own party mechanic that I know I'm not a fan of. But you have your own character that you can focus on, which doesn't make it that bad. But I think that the thing about Shin Megami Tensei is that it's definitely a series that I want to love more than I do. Like, it's I feel like it's a different beast from like Etrian Odyssey, in my opinion. I want to get into it real badly, but they're just such big commitments. It was like this with uh, Shin Megami Tensei uh, Nocturne, or... Uh, the, the PS2 one, it's called something different in America, I don't remember. It's just so difficult and so lengthy and they really like, unless you are super committed to a Shin Megami Tensei game, you probably won't, won't beat it. In fact, you know what game series, and I swear to god I'm not making a meme out of this, you know what game series I have a similar re uh, love towards? Dark Souls, okay? Because I will play a Dark Souls game and I will really enjoy it, but 
I'll get to a point like 20 hours in or so where the game will start getting really bullshit, I'll get to a really bullshit area and I'll just sort of say to myself, you know what, I had fun, I'm done with this now, I don't feel the need to complete it. So maybe in a way that's how I feel about Shin Megami Tensei. Maybe. I haven't decided if I'm going to drop it yet on the 3DS, but we'll see. Either way, when Shin Megami Tensei 5 comes out for the Switch, either this year or next year or wherever, I will definitely be buying it and giving it a go, so we'll see. I'm not going to... I'm not going to drop Shin Megami Tensei now, am I? Right, whew, that took a while. Um, here's a Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. This is a remake of the very first Fire Emblem game, and you actually play as Marth. It's so weird, actually, because obviously we all know Marth, you know, because of Smash Brothers. Definitely because of Smash Brothers. And he's shown up in his own series uh, as an important figure here and there. But this is a really, really good Fire Emblem game. Probably my favourite Fire Emblem game. If I'm honest, maybe maybe Fire Emblem Awakening kind of edges it out. And I'm not like, I've accepted that I'm not the biggest fan of our Fire Emblem, but yeah, this one was really good. I enjoyed it a lot, so yeah, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. But thumbs up for me, for sure. Um, Mario Kart DS, take what I said about every other Mario Kart game in these videos and you can apply it to that. Although I will say, <laughs> I do actually have something to say. This was one of the few games I, I know of in my life that my mum actually played and sort of liked. In fact, I remember one time I was in hospital uh, and I had to like, it was something that I had to be there all day. I was getting drip fed something. Don't worry, I was fine. I'm, I'm here right now, aren't I? And my mum would like stay there with me and we would like take turns playing this on the DS. That was our entertainment for the entire day was uh, Mario Kart DS, which was a... Uh, yeah, so there's actually quite a quite a nice memory with me and my mum attached to this game now that I think about it. Huh. Oh well. Shows me, eh? Right, uh, New Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, you know, I, I, I almost said fuck this game, I almost said fuck this game, but I have to remember that when this game came out, it was fucking fantastic. It was like such a good... 2D throwback. Of course, nowadays we look at this game, this series, the new Super Mario Brothers series, and just laugh at it because it's so samey and like, yeah. But when this one came out, it was really good. I think I said similar things about the uh, the Wii one when I was um when I was like talking about that. Okay, next up here is um another code. Uh, what's what's the proper name? Another code. Two memories. Memoir. Double. Two. Another code. Two memories. Okay. This is the game that came out before Another Code R for the Wii, which was a game that only came out in Japan and Europe. It stars the same, like, girl, and they were made by a company called Sync, and they're not the best sort of, like, story-based adventure games on the, D the DS and Wii, but they're all right. But uh, the company Sync, which is no longer with us, they closed down now, they're probably most famous for making Hotel Dusk, which was actually quite a big hit on the DS, you know? And I don't actually own Hotel Dusk. I have played it. I thought it was alright. But I do own Last Window. This was, this was the last game that Sync actually released. And again, it was not released in America, only Europe. Obviously, Americans can play this because the DS is region free. And I never actually finished this, which I feel really bad about, you know, being Sync's last game and all that. So I really should go back to it. And again, Hotel Dusk was really... It was good. It was definitely good. I'm just holding it up to the same bar of, like, Ace Attorney and all that. That's why I'm having this sort of reaction. But, yeah. Last one, though. Um, here's another series for you. The Castlevania uh, collection. Uh, well, the DS collection. We got, like, uh, Dawn of Sorrow. We got fucking Portrait of Ruined. And we've got Order of Ecclesia. And I was talking about this in the Game Boy Advance video where... The Castlevania games in the Game Boy Advance, I'm like, uh, I think I played those, whereas these three Castlevania games on the DS, I love these. I love these so much. They are so good. Each one I prefer to Symphony of the Night, which is probably super controversial, but I do. I do. I think maybe it's just something about playing them on a handheld that made it like more addicting for me at the time. But yeah, each one of these is so good. One of my favorite series on the DS, hands down. So... Uh, here's uh, Golden Sun. I kind of talked about Golden Sun in the Game Boy Advance video. Not played this, not played the second one yet, so yeah. 
don't know why I have an American copy actually. Um, Fantasy Star Zero, this was like a DS spin-off of Fantasy Star Online with its own story and stuff, and I did beat this. But it's one of those things that I, I have no I I can't remember a thing about it. I was like, wait, I did beat that. Yeah, I did beat this. Just never, I never like got into it, I guess. So, yeah, Fantasy Star. Uh, here's a Chrono Trigger. Is it wrong for me to say this game is a bit overrated? I hate that word. I hate when people use that word. It's like they're trying. It's every time someone uses that word. It sounds like they're just trying to get a rise, or they're trying to say like, oh, but this is my opinion, and you better know it. But yeah, a lot of people really fucking go nuts over Chrono Trigger, and I was like, it's fine? Like, that was as well as like, my reaction playing it, and this DS version was my first time uh, playing it. But yeah, Chrono Trigger, it's there, it exists, it's fine, it's, that's it. That's, that's all you gotta say. And uh, then we have uh, Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, the only Mario and Luigi game I've not played yet. This is a dodgy as fuck copy. This cover is like printed out and the actual cartridge is American. It looks like it's official, I think. I've never popped it in. And the manual is so printed out and fake feeling. I don't know where I got this from, but it's so dodgy. I want to wash my hands now. But um, yeah, and my last game here, a bit of an, under an underwhelming thing to end on, is uh, Children of Mana, which is in the Of Mana series. I've already talked about it in these videos. There was only really one good Secret of Mana game, at least that I've played so far, and this wasn't one of them. It was very, uh, I didn't dig it, so, yeah. That's the DS collection, a lot bigger than I thought it would be, actually. So, we only got one more Nintendo console to go, uh, then when, where will we go from there, who knows, so, yeah. See you guys, thanks for watching, bye-bye. Yeah.